my channel. Welcome back to another video. I'm Jessie and you're watching. As y'all know, June is the month that we celebrate the LGBTQIA community. I am a very proud member of the queer community and have been out since 2010, and I was really, really excited to celebrate my queerness in June, to read a bunch of queer books, and to just do all of the queer things. Obviously, there is a lot going on in the world right now, and it is an especially tumultuous time to be Black. Unfortunately, Black individuals are ostracized within the LGBTQIA community. A lot of people push us out of queer circles, don't see us as being part of the community, and that has some pretty devastating effects for black queers. It can be really, really hard to be forced to choose between your identity as an LGBTQIA person and your identity as a black person. I've definitely felt that struggle where I've wanted to participate in queer spaces, but there was a lot of racism in those spaces. Far too often, black people are pushed out of the queer community. Black people are far too often disregarded as being part of the LGBTQIA community. And unfortunately, a black trans man named Tony McDade was recently killed by police. It is so important to remember that there would be no pride without black trans people. That the first pride was a riot against police brutality. Marsha P. Johnson, a black trans woman, was instrumental to the pride movement. And we would not be able to have our flag and to have our queer celebrations and parties if it wasn't for her and other black trans people who made incredible sacrifices for the queer community. And so in solidarity with Black Lives Matter, in honor of Tony McDade's life, we are bringing back Blackathon, a readathon that I started in 2018, where we read black books. Beginning on Juneteenth, we are going to read as many black queer books as we can in a 48 hour period. Now it's really not a competition. If you only wanna read one book, that is totally fine. Quality over quantity, right? The really exciting thing about this queer edition of Blackathon is we have a new co-host, Mayana, of Mayana Reads. Honestly, I'm just really, really excited to celebrate both being black and being queer. I have a huge stack of black queer books here and I'm gonna give you a bunch of rapid fire book recommendations just to give you suggestions of what to read for Queer Blackathon. But keep in mind, these books are all fantastic. You can read them at any point in time during the year. If you're not able to fit them in this month, that is totally fine. Add them to your TBR, buy them, get them from your local library, get your hands on these books, and let's support some black queer narratives. I'm also going to be telling you what I am going to be trying to read for Queer Blackathon. I'm so freaking excited, y'all. And before we get started with the recommendations and my personal TBR, I wanted to say two quick things. The first thing is that even if the book itself isn't queer, but the author is a queer person, I think that, that still counts for Queer Blackathon. And the second thing that I wanna say is let's be extra mindful that we are including a sexual book Books, transgender books, bisexual, pansexual books in our pride reads. Pride does not just mean celebrating gays and lesbians, okay? If you're only celebrating gay and lesbian people, you're not celebrating pride, you're celebrating a very small part of the queer community. The queer community includes transgender people, trans binary and trans non-binary. It includes intersex people and asexual people and pansexual people. LGBTQIA is so much more than being gay. So let's remember that and if you're you're looking at your TBRs and you're realizing, hey, these books don't really celebrate the diversity that exists within the queer community, then maybe maybe you want to switch it up a little bit. And I do have a lot of recommendations in this stack that are trans inclusive and I have a multitude of genres represented. So without further ado, let's get started. Now, if you want to read something a little bit creepy and disturbing, I recommend reading Saw Kill Girls by Claire Legrand. This is a young adult horror novel that is told in three perspectives. One of the three protagonists, Zoe, is a black asexual girl and honestly the asexuality rep in this book is absolutely incredible. I loved Zoe as a character so much. She was my favorite character. Oh my gosh. It is the ultimate coming of age story essentially about these girls who live on a remote island called Sawkill Rock who have to band together to kill a monster that has been murdering and disappearing girls for decades. And so if you want some feminist magic, if you want some witchy vibes, if you want some girl power, there's also a female female romance in here. It's just queer on all the levels and absolutely fantastic. It's described as old school horror meets fresh 
female forward fury. There is no better summary of this book than that. Next book that I have here is actually my favorite book of 2020 thus far, and that is none other than All Boys Aren't Blue by George Johnson. This was my first read of 2020, and I have been raving about it since January, raving about this book. We are also going to be reading this this month for Envy Book Club, the non-binary book club that I host. Get yourself a copy and join in the fun over on the Envy Book Club Instagram. Our discussion is going to take place on July 7 for this book. This is a coming of age memoir that is marketed towards teens. It's basically a series of deeply touching and personal essays from activist George Johnson who identifies as gender non-conforming. Honestly, I felt so seen as a non-binary person reading this. If somebody's trying to understand non-binary identities, especially as they intersect with blackness, this is definitely the book that you have to read. I mean, look at how heavily I annotated this book. He has this way of crafting a sentence that is both so unpretentious and nonchalant, but still so powerful and impactful. He speaks so much truth. It's incredible. It's Please read this book. Then we have Homie by Danez Smith, who is a local author that I love so much. They are non-binary, and this is a poetry collection that is honestly just about radical love, and it is riotous, it is real, it's down to earth, it's super unpretentious. It's honestly just one long gospel love letter to blackness and to queerness, and it's just freaking fantastic. Then we have my favorite book, Freshwater by Akwik Amezi. Yo, I read this book in 2018, and when I tell you I felt that this book was written to me and for me and for me alone, that is exactly how I felt. I felt like a Akweke was speaking, was preaching directly to me. I felt so seen and acknowledged and understood. Just the writing in this book is knock your socks off, out of this world. I cannot believe that this is a Akweke Amezi's debut novel. <sighs> Oh my gosh, and I haven't even told you what it's about. <laughs> Cancel me. Freshwater is about a Nigerian individual named Ada. Ada is an individual who is born with multiple selves and has gods inside of them. But it isn't until they experience a traumatic event while at college that these gods end up crystallizing and taking control over their body. So while you're reading this book, you're getting the perspective of not only Ada, but of the gods that they share their body with. When I say that a Kweke Amezi can write their ass off, I truly, truly, deeply mean it. This book is phenomenal. It's short, but it packs a punch. It's incredibly complex. And if you can listen to audiobooks, I highly, highly, highly recommend the audiobook because a Kweke Amezi does an amazing job of reading it and narrating the story in a way that makes you feel as if it's playing out right in front of your eyes. I also just want to say that y'all need to pre-order Death of Vivek Oji because this is a Kweke Amezi's latest book. It comes out in August. And it's amazing. It focuses on trans individuals living in Nigeria and it's just fucking incredible. Then we have one of my favorite queer books of all time, which is Patsy by Nicole Dennis Ben. And since June is also Caribbean Heritage Month, this is a perfect book to read for June as well. Patsy is about a woman named Patsy who grew up in love with her best friend. Her best friend, Sisley, ended up moving to New York years ago and Patsy never forgot her or fell out of love with her. But because of the environment that Patsy lives in, she has hasn't been able to explore her queerness and ended up giving birth to a child at a very young age, although she had no interest in being a mother. And so in this book, we're following Patsy as she goes to New York City in order to pursue the love of her life, as well as Patsy's child, True. This is one of those stories that takes place over a period of decades. And oh my goodness, the passage of time is handled so eloquently in this book. The representation for queerness is phenomenal. And Patsy's child, True, is non-binary and just the non-binary representation is amazing. I was so, so impressed with the way that True's character was written with so much love and care. Just absolutely meticulous character building. There's a lot of moral ambiguity. Patsy definitely makes some choices that are incredibly harmful for her child, True. And so this is definitely a book that will test your sense of empathy. One of my favorite things about it though was I love the representation for queer individuals who are over the age of 30. LGBTQ representation is 
almost always targeted at young people. And so I thought it was really, really powerful to see elder queer folks in this book. A very traumatic book though. So definitely look up trigger warnings for this. Same for, same with Freshwater. Freshwater is a deeply, deeply traumatizing story. And also I should say that All Boys Aren't Blue has a trigger warning for incest. Then we have one of my favorite series of all time, which is the Broken Earth Trilogy. Honestly, I am, oh, just so impressed with the queerness in this freaking story. One of my favorite things about N.K. Jemisin is that she truly shows that she loves the black diaspora. And what I mean by that is she is such a queen at crafting characters that represent the full spectrum of all the ways an individual can be black. In this story, we have trans characters, we have female female romance, we have polyamorous characters, and one of the main characters is a queer man. There's just so much black diversity and I absolutely loved that. I loved that so much about this story and if you're not aware of what this series is about, it is a dystopian fantasy trilogy where the earth is plagued by incredibly violent weather and whenever a season takes place, people kind of bunker down and band together for survival. Things are made even more complicated when you introduce origin into the world which are people who have the ability to control the earth. However, these people are highly stigmatized. They don't have rights in society. They are killed and ostracized and feared and hated as deeply as one can imagine. And so it's about the ostracization of origins as well as people trying to fight for survival as a whole. The world building also is just amazing. It's so good, y'all. Then we have The Deep by River Solomon. Oh, Small, but again, packs a punch. Audiobook is incredible. If you're able to listen to it, highly recommend. This is an incredibly powerful story from a non-binary author. It's about people that live under the sea named Wajinru, and they are the descendants of enslaved Africans who either threw themselves overboard to escape their bondage or were thrown overboard by their captors. Because they have come from such a deep history of violence, their minds have only been able to survive by developing incredibly short memories. For this reason, they designate one person who is temporarily responsible for holding the memories of their history. And a few times a year, the Wajinru will converge and kind of feed on these memories. So basically our protagonist is the historian who's being forced to hold these memories. That is not something that she wants. It's an incredible burden. It's causing her extreme pain and illness. There's so much to unpack here. I could talk about this book all day, every day. This was another one of our NB book club picks and we had such a great time discussing it. The queer representation in this book is absolutely phenomenal. There's representation for non-binary identities, asexuality, there's polyamory and just general overall queerness. Honestly, this book is queer from page one all the way to the end. And it's a really easy book to get through in a very short period of time. But I do recommend taking your time with this because there's just so much deliciousness to dissect here. Then we have Pet by Akweke Mezi, which if y'all can't tell, I'm obsessed with Akweke and everything that they write is phenomenal. Pet is an amazing young adult utopian novel about a trans girl named Jam who accidentally brings a monster to life. She and this monster, who is literally my favorite character in this entire story, team up in order to fight an unspeakable evil that is plaguing Jam City. The world that Jam lives in has been liberated of all of the awful things that plague us, things like racism and homophobia and transphobia and systemic oppression. She learns that not all of the monsters are gone and resolves to do something about it. Another amazing work by Amezi. The writing is really, really beautiful. It's super easy to get through. I think it reads a little bit on the lighter side of YA, but honestly that didn't bother me one bit. Then we have I Wish You All the Best by non-binary author Mason Deaver. This is a young adult contemporary about Ben who is kicked out of their house when they come out as non-binary. They end up moving in with their sister who they haven't seen in 10 years and start attending a new school where they meet Nathan. And this story is essentially about Ben and Nathan falling in love, Ben working through the recent trauma that they've experienced. There's really fantastic representation for anxiety in this book and panic attacks. And I love that it's not all doom and gloom. I love that at the heart of the story is a really really beautiful queer romance and again if you don't know much about non-binary identities this is another great book to pick then we have the wicked and the divine which is a comic series that I've loved 
pretty much since it came out. The art in this book is absolutely stunning and I swear like every character in this book is queer in some way. Ironically, this character is queer and I love him to pieces. So The Wicked and the Divine is a comic book about gods who are reborn every 90 years. This time they've come back as modern day pop stars. It's creepy, it's haunting, it's super queer. There are trans characters. The story is really fast paced. It's exciting. The art is just completely stunning and I highly, highly recommend. Then we have The Starless Sea by Erin Morgenstern, which if you're in the mood for reading a chunky monkey, this this is the one, this is the one for you. The Starless Sea is a very magical adult fantasy about Zachary Ezra Rollins, who ends up opening a door and falling into another world. There are doors all over the world that are portals into another world, and in that world exists the Starless Sea. But he and his friends are being hunted by individuals who want nothing more than to shut these doors down and close off these portals forever. Our protagonist of the story is a young gay Haitian man, and I absolutely loved him. The writing was so so beautiful. This book was really kindly sent to me by my friend Elliot. So thank you so much, Elliot. I absolutely loved it. If you're looking for something that's really whimsical and magical, definitely read this. One of the things that I really loved about this book was our main character was black, but he wasn't constantly suffering racism. He just he just was black. And as much as books that unpack racial identity matter, books where the main character doesn't have to constantly suffer because of their race matter just as much. These are the kinds of stories that I live for and want to see because as a black person, I don't want to read about racism 24 seven. Sometimes I just want to escape into a great story where the protagonist just so happens to look like me. Then we have one of my favorite comic books of all time, Motor Crush. <sighs> oh my gosh. Volume 3 comes out this year. So excited. I cannot freaking wait. Motor Crush is this incredible comic book about a 23 year old racer named Domino who competes during the day in a highly televised motorcycle competition. And at night, she competes in illegal street racing. It's a science fiction comic and I recommend going in knowing as little as possible. But I will say that Domino is queer and she has this really tumultuous relationship with this girl. There is plus size representation, there's disability representation, there's queer representation, black representation. It's amazing. The writing is phenomenal. The story is great. You will not be bored at any point in time reading this. And the last book that I have for you is The Stars and the Blackness Between Them by Janata Petrus. I read this last year for a Black Girl Magic blog and it was one of my favorite books of 2019. Absolutely phenomenal. This is another great book that you can read in celebration of Caribbean heritage. It's by a local queer black author and it's about a Trinidadian girl who moves to Minneapolis after being kicked out of her home for being queer and then she falls in love with another girl and the queerness continues. The love story in this novel was everything, everything for me. If you want a book that just shows how precious black girls are, this is definitely the book for you. The writing is so poetic and lyrical and beautiful and it makes sense because Janata is a poet and you can just hear her poetry in every word. I highly recommend the audiobook. It's absolutely incredible. In this book, there is also unpacking of the prison industrial complex. So it's definitely a really great book to read for our political climate right now. There's so much celebration of nature and black girl magic and it's just a beautiful coming of age story. And I'm probably gonna reread it this year because I, as you can tell, I loved it so, so much. Now for what I'm going to try and read for Queer Blackathon. I don't know um, what I'm going to be in the mood for, so I've got a short little stack here. Okay, it's really not that short, but a lot of these books are small, so just like let me live. We have The Gilda Stories. This is on my TBR for this month anyway. This is a classic about black lesbian vampires. That's honestly all I know about this book, and that's all I need to know. <laughs> then we have Unkindness of Ghosts by Rivers Solomon. Again, Rivers is a non-binary author. I started this book in 2018 and I just never finished it. The protagonist of this story is intersex and she lives in the low deck slums of what is basically an antebellum space craft. It's the kind of story that I wanted to go in knowing as little as possible about, but I do know that it involves a civil war and it's super queer. And from what I read, I really, really enjoyed the writing. So I'm excited to actually restart it and finish it. I would really like to read Red at the Bone by Jacqueline Woodson. And I don't believe that this book is queer, but Jacqueline Woodson is a queer author. A lot of people don't realize that. This book opens in 2001 New York City and it is pretty much told in vignettes between two families. I absolutely love intergenerational 
generational narratives. I love books that center black families and memories and getting to see one scene through multiple perspectives or even like one event through multiple perspectives. This is a book that I've heard amazing things about, especially on Bookstagram. So many reviewers that I trust have been raving about this book. So I'm really excited to read it. Then we have How We Fight For Our Lives, which is at the absolute top of my TBR. It's wild how good memoirs have gotten. I honestly feel like years ago, 10 years ago, memoirs just weren't written with the level of empathy and composure and relatability that they are now. Just some, some of my favorite books that I've read as of late have been memoirs. I never ever thought I would be falling in love with memoirs and yet here we are. Let me know in the comment section down below what you are going to be reading for Queer Blackathon. And also if you have a black queer book recommendation, I would love to hear it. By any means, this is not at all an exhaustive, all-inclusive list of the fantastic black queer books that exist out in the world. There are so many that I didn't include. I hope that you will participate in celebrating queer black identity with me, Francina, Lauren, and Mayana starting on June 19th. If you liked this video, please give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel. I would absolutely love it if you became a part of my bookish family. All of my social media links are gonna be in the description box below. Stay safe and I can't wait to see you in my next video. Oh,